Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. We are back for the fourth and final part of The Flame That Went Out. In this part of the series, we're going to sort of tie up some loose ends, talk about uh, the aftermath uh, and what happened after the fire and that. And uh, I also have a little bone to pick with XJO 81 x So we'll go through all of that and then wrap everything up. So let's rejoin the video already in progress. So now I remember uh, a couple things after that, uh, the night of the fire. Uh, and we learned some further information, <laughs> actually, also. The night of the fire, I remember we had gone out of the house and we were standing there in front of the house. And Michelle, there was a porch there that was spanned the length of the front window or something. It was a sizable area. Well, you could sit outside. And a post, kind of like this, nothing tied around it, obviously. Post there, and that had, uh, was just there, it was just wood. And I remember she leaned against it and cried. I just remembered that. Okay, I don't remember. I, but I, okay. could, I could see how, but then it was funny because somehow we later learned that this was not the first house fire that she has had. I was just going to get into that, um, which there's really not a lot of info. At some point, it was divulged, divulged to me <laughs> that this was not her first house fire. She had something somewhere else in another town. She had another fire. And she collected insurance money, and instead of staying, she bought this house, and I was going to be the first renter upstairs. Yes. And this fire happened again. Or this fire happened. So this was the second, or maybe even the third. Yes, it was brought to my attention that this was not her first. Now, yeah. at some point, we exchanged cell phone numbers, which I'm sure I had already. I let it go a while, because she lost a lot more. And then at some point, someone told me, you are, um, you deserve, um, excuse me, you need to ask her for your security, security deposit, back. deposit back. Oh, do I, da, 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 and yeah, 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 yeah. So I call, and I was, um, I was met with resistance. I was met with, I'm a victim. Uh, I don't know if I have it. I don't know if you're entitled to it. Da, 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 da. And after some time, I got, um, I got, at, I, I got an attitude. I got very like, no, I will call people. I will call lawyer. I don't, whatever. And I remember the resistance about that. Yeah. I would call her and she wouldn't pick up. I would call her and she wouldn't. You know, there was no texting. In 2007, I would leave a voicemail, blah, 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 and I would say six months to a year, maybe eight months. She agreed. I met her on the side of her on, of the road, somewhere, and she handed me cash. And that was the last time I've ever seen or spoken to her. And that is the end of her as a landlord. Right. And that was it. Uh, it was boarded up for quite some time. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, I don't know when, Jay says there might have been a for sale sign on there. Yeah, I think there was a for sale. Somebody bought it is what I remember. Right, right. They gutted it, it redid the inside. And it's been... Two central ACs were placed on the right side of the house. Okay. They're there. And, and it's, um, uh, the rest is history um, <clears throat> as far as how many people have been in and out. Is irrelevant, but since it has been sold and redone, it's it's just there. Right. Whether and it's a mother or daughter, or it doesn't matter. Two other things I remember. Uh, one was Joe said he didn't lose much. There were there were some electrical outlets. I think it was part of your stash. Yes, I don't have that anymore. I've actually used them. And I the box had, had like weird they were stacked and the smoke makes like these brown lines 
right. in the box. And I remember taking the outlets back, and as I needed them, all you needed is a little Clorox wipe, and it, like the soot came off in the outlets, wherever they are, whether they're his house or my house or a client's house. There, I remember I had some outlets. Maybe they were the old ones. I don't remember. But I was trying everything that I had in my arsenal to try to clean these things. And what I ended up doing, which you're not supposed to do, <laughs> was I had a uh, plastic tote that I filled with water, and I found that bleach got rid of the smoke smell. And I had these submerged in there, some sort of pump to circulate the water in there. I was doing this in my backyard. Uh, I remember that, and I sat there with uh, my little Harbor Freight three-gallon uh, air compressor and blowing the water out of the outlets. There was one other white plastic wheel. I can't really explain it. And I remember if I would hit it with the blowgun, it would go really fast. And I remember Joe came over, and I hit that, and this thing whistled like mad. It was just crazy crazy how fast I got this thing to spin. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I remember that. It ended up with the outlets that, I don't know if I was cold away or, or something, all of the contacts turned rusty and they couldn't be saved. So that all got thrown out. My shop vac was sitting there in the first picture that we saw earlier of the aftermath, right in the kitchen, the where the table would go area and that's where it sat during the fire or I don't know if the fireman moved it or what but it was there and like I had explained in that video on the shop vac it sat there and it was uh, smoke damaged so I couldn't put it in my garage or in my house I didn't know what to do with it but it did still work so I didn't want to throw it out, so it ended up living in the back corner of my backyard for up until this year. Up until two weeks ago. Yeah, not even a week ago at the time of this recording. And that was really the deal with it. Now, as far as the shop vac is concerned, I got a little bone to pick here with Joe. And I'm going to say this now. It's been so many. It's been 15 years. It's water under the bridge, so no hard feelings on this. But I did tell you that you really should replace my shop vac. And you said, well, I'm not responsible. I didn't start the fire. And I said, I know, but you borrowed my shop vac, and it was there. I know you can't control what happened, but it's in your care and custody. And I know it wasn't really your fault, but I feel that you really should have replaced it. But he didn't. I ended up replacing it, and I have a brand new one that was just a year older that I had purchased from uh, and yes that was Windows XP and these are old netbooks and just perfect for this and uh, yeah it, it was just uh, just lost in the fire that it finally crapped out it's gone I uh, do remember <clears throat> asking her for extra money for and that she, and for your stereo and for the stereo and she was just it was all resistance yeah and yep. uh, I will agree to disagree, but not disagree. At the time, I was younger. I probably wasn't financially where I am now. And on camera, I will admit that if you do borrow something, whether it's a car or a shop vac, you are responsible. And at the time, I probably would 99.9% um, .9 now. If the same thing happened, hopefully I would replace the shop rack. But at that time, at 26, oh, yeah, we like, were younger. And who cares, hon? I don't care. A but we were, yes, like you, I said, it's water under the bridge. You we're in our 40s now. You should replace okay, something so if you break it. <laughs> they say if you borrow a car, never return it with no gas. If I borrow Jay's car and it had a half a tank, it's not at the price, and he doesn't want nothing back, give him the full tank. Okay, that's the way life is. Return, if you borrow something, return it in better condition than you borrowed it. Right, so I should have, on camera, replaced it shop rack with a equal to lesser value. <laughs> but I didn't. It's over with, and 
It's water under the There's bridge. There's plenty of things be between now, you know, then and then. But yes, the remnants of the old shop vac I brought over to my father. Right. Also, before you start, keyboard warriors. There's 30 years of friendship, so don't don't this video, however yeah. long it is, don't start. Don't start. Well, I would have replaced it because you're going to get me involved, and you're not going to like my comments. Right. Okay. Like I you, said it's water under the bridge. I should have replaced it, and I didn't, and it's over with. We said what we were going to say. Because I know that. what you're going to do. You're going to take this 65-minute video and you're going to focus <laughs> on that because it's the last three minutes. Right. You're not going to remember that I went through a whole fire. You're going to say, oh, if I was you, I would have... Shut up. Right. <laughs> so uh, the remnants of that I brought over to my dad, who was going to offer the base of it, which was still fine, <laughs> or fine enough for Finer. what it was Finer. to his neighbor a couple doors down. I don't know whatever became of that at this point in time or if it was just thrown out. One other little tidbit about the fire. Um, fire. A month later, a week, uh, uh, two months later, I'm working at Tiny Middle on the sales floor and I'm standing there and some guy comes in. And he's asking me about a hard drive or a memory or I don't know what it was. It's inconsequential. And he said, I know you from somewhere. Oh, okay, yeah. And it turns out that uh, he was a friend of Michelle's. And that night, before the fire that we went down and ate dinner with everybody, he was there. And that's where we met. I don't know if we had any words, but now I was dealing with him in a business perspective. Didn't he tell you that she had another house fire? Uh, he may have. Uh, well, why would she tell? You? Right. Yeah, I, I she think would. I think inadvertently he said something that day while he was at, where he was working. So, anyways, uh, long and short of the story was he came in, and in Tiny Middle we would take people's information, name and address and all that, and his name was Carl, but not really Carl because he was Italiano. Oh, it was Carlo. Oh. So I said, have you heard from Michelle? Oh, yeah. Uh, she moved somewhere, got an apartment. I don't think she was with Frank anymore. I don't know if they were married or were going to get married or what. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they had a very... Tumultuous relationship <coughs> Almost like, uh, <clears throat> like maybe she was a stripper and <laughs> he and was he the guy that... Or something. He yeah. was the guy that gave her the most money. So she, she went half seas on the house. Right. Because, so, uh, <laughs> so long and short of all of that, uh, Carl came in, we're going to say two more times after that. And the last time I said, any word from Michelle? And Carl said that she basically vanished. Just vanished. Just He doesn't know about her whereabouts, anything, not at all. She vanished off the face of the earth, and that was also the last time that I ever saw Carl. So that's that. And with that, that will bring this incredibly long old war story yeah, to please. an end. Thank you. I don't uh, know how long, but... Yeah, it's going to be long. Anyways... Yeah. If you sat through it, thank you. If you parted it, you're sitting on the bathroom, I, uh, thank Yeah, you. I don't know if I might... Uh, break this into parts or not we'll see in post but anyway yeah. that's going to do it make sure that you go and subscribe to xjo81x mm -hmm. link in the prescription amongst probably other links maybe yeah a couple right? of other links we're starting here to do there. that now because we're talking about things we've been on youtube for how many years we have hundreds of thousands of videos him more <clears throat> if you just subscribe today how do you know that Jay doesn't have a video that you might like, so we kind of try to take these videos going forward and we're like, hey, I'm working on my car, but then let me send you all the links of every car I've ever worked on. So right. trying to get, you know, I don't expect you to start searching, but if it's already there, maybe you'll watch it. So I'm sure there'll be links below, and he's definitely going to put a link to my channel if you have not subscribed or know that we've been friends for, for so, so long. so many years. So... Anyway, that's going to wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Take it easy.